Now, today's guest is no stranger to us, or you at home, actually. She spent 13 years and over 1,400 lunchtime sitting right here at this desk. But when Andrew McLean announced she was leaving Loose Women in December 2020, she said she wanted to be brave and take chances. So she is back today to tell us how her life has been without Loose. Please welcome Andrew McLean. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I was going to say, do you want to swap? Yeah. No. You feel more comfortable here. It feels really nice actually being a passenger on the bus, not Does the it? driver. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an odd experience, though, isn't it? It's to... a bit out of body. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so nice. And not just so nice because I've been here all morning popping mm. in and saying hi to you guys. Also, all the lovely crew and everybody. It's just, oh, I'm giddy. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, and, and actually, the last time the viewers saw you here, you were very emotional, I which know. you were trying not to be, yeah. I know, when you because it was your decision to go. Mm. And mm. a lot of people talk about it uh, being brave yeah um was it brave like now you've done it do you look back and go actually it was quite brave yeah at, at the time so many people were saying to me um oh my gosh what a brave thing to do I mean also what a stupid thing to do it's the middle of a pandemic and you're quitting your job to follow your dreams mm. um but yeah I look back on it now at the time it felt like just something I needed to do now I look back and think actually that it, it was a, a brave decision because I remember saying I felt like I needed, I needed to jump and see if I could fly, and I didn't know if I was going to face plant or fly. That's not a saying, but now it is. <laughs> um, and I'm just so glad I did. I, I love. And you what actually I do. say, and this is your fourth book. It is my fourth um, book. You yeah. just need to believe it, which you did. Yeah. Uh, ten ways in ten days to unlock your courage and reclaim your power. And you said actually leaving us, yeah. the show, was actually the catalyst for this book. Hundred percent, because. What I did was when I left to uh, really go all in on This Girl Is On Fire, I wanted to put a challenge together for, for the lovely women who joined me to show them how to do brave things and to move away from fear because I was still really scared. People thought, oh, I'm, I'm brave and I'm not feeling fear, but I am. So I put this 10-day challenge together. Ruth, I had no idea whether it was going to work or not. Mm. I knew it worked for me, but I didn't know if it would work for In what way? Else. Like, what were the challenges and why 10 days? So, 10 days because it's long enough that you need to keep going with it. If, it, if it's five, you can kind of think, all right, that'll zip mm. by in no time. But 10, you kind of need to dig in a little bit. Um, really, what, it's learning, uh, what it was learning about, and you'll understand this, Katie, yeah. it was about learning to really love yourself. Self-esteem, yeah. It's boosting your self-esteem and that the best way to overcome fear, whether it's fear that's from your inside in terms of, I can't do, I can't do this thing because what will people think? Mm. Uh, I can't make this decision because everyone will laugh at me. Fear of failure. Actually, if you come at any kind of fear from a position of, love and strength that's my favorite step step number six that was all about loving yourself mm. wasn't Thank it and, you. and focusing on that yeah. and, and actually really then if you can do that then i'm sure that the rest of the steps will become more naturally to you and yeah. don't you think as well that sometimes fear can help you propel forwards mm. if you use it in the right, right way 100 percent. and and it's not at all about squashing fear you need fear fear is there to protect you mm. but there's a there's a, vis a visualization that i use in the book about and that's why i use the word unlock we get so caged in by our fear, and actually, we have it within us already to learn how to unlock it, and you learn to walk alongside fear. And but how so... did you learn it? I mean, you're, you're writing about this yeah. now and teaching other people, particularly women, mm. how to unlock it, but how did you do that? Because you've talked before about... You yeah. always said, you know, I, I was a people pleaser, I, I didn't say things or do things because I didn't want people to dislike me, I wasn't yeah. sure what they think of my opinion. Yeah. So how... Yeah. What's changed you? Um... Really, it was when I had my breakdown in 2019, which, which and that's what I love about the show, is obviously I was able to talk about mm -hmm. it and people reached out to me and, and you know, and I, and I helped other people through that. I think I built a little toolkit up during that time, which felt really dark and horrible. But what it made me do was, was realise, one, I never want to go back to that place mm -hmm. again. But also, I need to stop looking for, and this is what we all do as people, I'll... Someone else will fix me. I'll mm. feel better then. Mm. Actually, you need to learn to fix yourself. So really what I did was I learned to tune inwards rather than tune outwards. I mean, you guys all know, mm. yeah. you know, I'm meditating before coming to work, yeah. doing yeah. some sort of movement. Yeah. This is not new. This is what I yeah. did all and the time. The personal development um, world is massive, isn't it? You know, yeah. the likes of Tony Robbins, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So where do you think your sort of brand fits in and, and who are you sort of targeting at? 
Um, and that's such a good question, because when I first started doing this, I was so filled with imposter syndrome. You know, when you say those, say those names, I was thinking, who the hell am I to think that I mm. can do anything like this? And what I realised over the past year, I'm not trying to be like anyone. Actually, I'm just being me. And once yeah. I breathed out and thought, well, that's all right, actually. I don't have to that. be like yeah. anyone else. Yeah. I'm just going to do it my own way. And I started really kind of settling into it and realising that... I've always been the quietest spoken mm. here. And I thought, oh, am I going to have to be loud on a stage? No, actually. If you speak quietly, people lean in. Mm. So just yeah. keep being yourself. But also, you're working, well, one who knows, working with your husband. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Because you've both trained as life coaches, mm -hmm. both qualified life coaches, but working together. Mm. So how is that panning out in the same house, same project? <laughs> we have been mm. talking about arguing with your partner. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was yeah. listening <laughs> and nodding. Yeah. Um, good, really good. But it's been a journey to get to that place. We love, we love a journey. Yeah. Yeah. When I first left, obviously, I was so used to... I came to work here, mm. you know, and I'm... See ya in, yeah. in the morning. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that next Monday, my place is sitting right next to him at work. We were in the middle of the pandemic. It was lockdown. It was January. It was hard. I think a lot of people experienced that at home, didn't they, working with yeah. their partners? Yeah. But we And people work learned. often very differently. Do you and Nick yes. work differently? Yes. So we had to, to learn. And obviously he'd been working from home the whole time, whereas I was merrily going out. And so I realised, right, I need my own space. So I commandeered Finley's room because he'd gone off to uni. Mm. And that became mine. I bought a Do Not Disturb sign from Amazon. <laughs> and then I said, I will meet you at half ten for a coffee. But until that, if the house is burning down, then you can knock on the door. Mm. But apart from that, please stop. Great Check example of boundaries. Yeah. That's yes. good boundaries. Yeah. Speaking boundaries. of knocking on the door, I remember you buying this house of yours. And it was, it was like your dream house. Yeah, yeah. And now... I don't live there you anymore. don't live there anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> what... How... I mean, that must have taken courage. Mm. It did. It did. And, again, I remember when I was here and, and speaking about leaving and people saying to me, what could be the worst thing that could happen? And what I did then was I built what I call my blueprint for failure, which is all the terrible things that could possibly happen, what will I do with? Mm. And at the top of that list was what would happen if I end up having to sell my house. When it came to that point, and that was because of tech, we've yeah. been working on building an app all of this time, and we've been working with this amazing company in San Francisco, mm. but everything took way longer than we, than we thought. And we came to a realisation, we're going to need to sell our house to get, get to money in. To... Yeah. Once I repositioned my thinking on that, you know, because we've been brought up to think bricks and mortar, invest yeah, yeah. in bricks and mortar, and I thought, no, I'm going to invest in myself. I believe in me, I believe that I can do this, so that's what I did. <laughs> Well, this, you've done so much since we saw <laughs> I know. you. It's, I it's so lovely. We miss you here, but you haven't shut the door completely, you know, ever, Never. have you, on, on television no. or Loose Women. Uh, you just need to believe it. Ten ways in ten days to unlock your courage and reclaim your power by Andrea McLean out now. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. Nice.